is it game over for Databricks? And what is my honest opinion about this better together story that Databricks and Microsoft are pushing right now? This and much more covered shortly. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Microsoft Azure and Fabric related topics. In this video I will compare Microsoft Fabric to Azure Databricks on several fronts so you get an idea how they differ and which of these platforms to choose. In this video we are not going to dive into very fine technical details and we are going to stay on quite high level, but still it would be beneficial if you are a bit familiar with both of these platforms on conceptual level. But now, without further ado, let's get started and let's first talk about setting up these different platforms. The major difference between these two platforms is that Databricks is mainly platform as a service product and requires setting up infrastructure to Azure to get it up and running. On the other hand, Marx Fabric is this fully managed software as a service product and doesn't really require any infrastructure to Azure side. This means that the initial setup with Databricks is already more complex than with Fabric. Also, in my opinion, this software as a service nature makes Fabric the far easier product to buy. Since you don't have to think about this complex setup in Azure, that could be a bit scary and confusing for people and decision makers who are not that tech savvy. The one thing that I have to give to Databricks in this regard is that due to this platform as a service nature, you are able to get more control over your setup. That allows you to do some optimizations and cost savings better. But of course running this platform as a service setup will require more expertise to your side. But in the big picture, I would say that the Fabric is the far easier product to get started with, since it is just one software as a service package. Usually price and pricing are one of the key topics that are on the table when deciding which platform to choose. The pricing model of these platforms is a bit different since Databricks uses this pay-as-you-go pricing model. If cutting some corners, basically with Databricks, you pay for the compute resources that you use and then you have to pay for the data storage and your data will be most likely sitting in Azure Blob Storage that is this relatively cheap and scalable data solution. Also with Databricks, you have to think about what other Azure resources you might need to complement your Databricks platform setup in Azure. And of course, those resources have costs as well. But all in all, this setup is very straightforward in my opinion and very typical to cloud and allows you to do some customizations and optimizations, for example, having smaller compute clusters in your development and testing environments and do some cost optimizations that way. With Max Fabric, the pricing setup may seem straightforward at first sight, since it has this capacity-based pricing model, and you buy some capacity, and then you pay something for the data storage in one leg, and you're good to go, right? Yes, this is how the pricing goes if we overly simplify things, but there are some major issues with the current pricing model that I want to raise. As we can see from this list, some of the smaller capacities are relatively cheap. So maybe you could be thinking that you buy some of these smaller capacities here and use one per environment and then you're good to go. The current major issue with this is that the better security features like private endpoints that would allow you to build truly network secure platform require at least F64 capacity that is already 8.5 grand per month without any discounts. Maybe for large corporations this could be peanuts, but for some smaller to medium sized companies this could be a huge upfront investment that they don't want to make. Now somebody could be thinking that maybe you can buy just one F64 capacity and then just share this capacity across all your environments slash workspaces. To be honest, I don't think this is a very smart move, since you don't want to have your production workloads on the same capacity than your development and testing workloads, since it could lead up to a situation where somebody does something not so wise in your development or testing environments and then it would eat up up the whole capacity and now you would have a situation where your data pipelines and reports are not working in production which means that the business is not getting data that they need. So in my opinion production capacity must be separated from development and testing capacities which means that you would need at least two F64 capacities 
which is not an ideal setup, since I would advise to have at least one capacity per environment. That's why I really hoped that they would get rid of this ridiculous F64 paywall for those better security features, and I would really see them benefiting from this decision in the long run, since the adaptation of fabric would be more wider spread. As a conclusion about pricing, getting started with fabric is quite more expensive than with Databricks when we talk about raw platform costs. So in this sense, the current pricing setup favors Databricks over fabric. Next, let's briefly talk about the features and capabilities of these two platforms. Both of these platforms use Delta Parquet files as their default data format, which is this very good and efficient open source data format. However, when we talk about the ways of interacting and using the data, things start to differ quite a bit. Databricks uses this notebook and code-based interface to interact with the data. That means using some of the programming languages that are supported with Spark, like Python, Scala, Spark SQL, and R. And of course, Databricks has features to schedule your notebooks and run them as part of your daily data processing logic. Also, Databricks has a very good integration with version control like Git, and deploying objects from one environment to another is very doable and very well supported in Databricks. When overly simplifying things, Fabric has mostly the same functionality that is found in Databricks, but so much more on top of that. For example, a Fabric has these many low-code, no-code tools like pipelines and data flows that could be a bit more beginner-friendly since you don't have to do that much coding to use them. Also, all the Power BI functionality is found in Fabric, which means that you can do these really world-class data visualizations and dashboards with it. But one of the key features that is really a game changer in Fabric is the one leg and the possibility to create shortcuts to data stores that could be even outside of Microsoft ecosystem like AWS and Google Cloud. The core idea behind one leg is to be this single one access point to all the data that organization have. And if Microsoft really pulls this off like they are trying to do, this could be a huge threat to other players even outside of Microsoft ecosystem. But that's a topic for another video. So all in all, Fabric is way more feature packed than Databricks and really aims to be this end-to-end -end data platform for all the data needs. However, not all the features in Fabric are ready yet, so we have to talk about the maturity of these two platforms. But before we do that, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you, and that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Mark's Fabric and Azure content. It doesn't cost you anything, and I would highly appreciate that. But now, let's talk about the maturity. Databricks has been around from 2013, that is already over 10 years now, and this means that Databricks is already a very mature product with good and proven features. Databricks is really ready for production workloads, and I have been personally using Databricks for many years now, and I have been happy with the platform so far. Also, as a side note, Databricks can be found from other clouds as well, like AWS and Google Cloud. So this means that there's a huge community of users using Databricks, and it's not going to die out anytime soon. The story with Marx Fabric is a lot shorter, since it has been around for a little bit over a year now. So in that sense, Marx Fabric is a really new product. Even though Marx has been bringing features from its existing products to Fabric, like from Azure Data Factory and from Power BI. But still, like I noted earlier, many of the features in Fabric are not ready yet. And in my opinion, it's not ready to be used in production environments yet. Personally, my biggest issue with Fabric currently is that the version control and CI-CD capabilities are not yet that ready, and deploying objects from one environment to another is a little bit challenging at the moment. However, this time it seems that Microsoft has a clear backlog of features that they are going to implement to Fabric, and so far they are delivering, which is an excellent thing. Some of you might remember what happened with Fabric's predecessor, Synapse Analytics, and how that never really fulfilled the promises that were made. But this time, things seem to be way more promising so far, and Microsoft is really delivering those features that they are promising to deliver. 
Then the question is, which of these platforms to choose if you would like to build a brand new data platform to Microsoft ecosystem? The answer would be Databricks, if you need that platform right now. Since, like I discussed, not all the features in Fabric are quite ready yet, so it doesn't allow to do things in a very professional manner yet. However, if you have time to wait until next year, then I would say Fabric could be a very viable choice if Microsoft implements those crucial features that are still missing. Even if you would go with Databricks, I would still think about the future migration path to Fabric in the architectural design of the platform, since after Fabric matures, that is something that you might want to do. The good thing is that these platforms are not so different, since both of these use Delta Parquet files as their default data format and are capable of running Spark. So migration path from Databricks to Fabric should not be that bad. Other way around things could be a bit more complicated. Since Fabric has a lot of those low code, no code tools and migrating logic out from them to Databricks could be a bit challenging. Now let's change our scope to the future and how I see this platform position them in Microsoft data ecosystem during upcoming years and what I think about this better together story that they have been pushing so far. I know that Microsoft and Databricks have this extensive partnership going on and they want to support each other or at least seem to do so. That's why Microsoft is drawing still Databricks to these architectural diagrams like the one we can see here. But my honest opinion about this is that they're doing this because of their ongoing partnership and at the same time Microsoft is implementing all the core functionality found in Databricks to Fabric. So in my opinion in future we are most likely not going to see this Databricks icon appear in these Microsoft architectural diagrams and I would see that they are not promoting Databricks like they are currently doing. Also, in my opinion, once Fabric matures, it just has way too many things going for it and Databricks can't really compete with it in Microsoft's ecosystem. I would imagine that this is already causing a lot of friction and tension between these two companies and their relationship might not be as warm as it made out to be. Since now Microsoft is a direct competitor with Databricks in the same niche that it's already occupying. Also, there have been some blog posts from Databricks side that have had this salty attitude towards Fabric. These blog posts have been deleted for obvious reasons, but I managed to find one of these blog posts from Web Archive. And here we can see those sarcastic comments about shortcuts and how they make great demos. I'll leave a link to this deleted blog post in the description below, so you can draw your own conclusions from it. But now I would like you to know that are you in Team Fabric or Team Databricks, and what do you think about this better together story that they are currently pushing? Also, I would like you to know if you would like to see a video where I compare these two platforms more on technical and feature level, so leave some comments to the comment section down below. If you want to know how Fabric's data factory differs from Azure data factory, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.